Hi guys, we're here with Steve Van, the model anarchist, and today we're going to have a part two on his brilliant idea, Guy Fawkes and Freedom Day, later in the year. And Stephen, it's always a pleasure to speak with you, to talk about freedom, to talk about truth. And why don't we go through your idea and then go into part two, and then we'll have a little chat. We're going to have a little uh, surprise visit by another freedom friend later today. But for now, the floor is yours <laughs> to talk right. about your idea and the part two of the solution. <laughs> okay, so the uh, to recap what we talked about last time, mainly the idea is that on November 5th, instead of going in and casting your vote at the ballot box, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to our cars and we're gonna take our license plates off. And we're going to show that we're we're done being governed by warmongers through through threats of violence, right? Because, you, you know, if government is an idea to organize cooperation, then we know that we all want cooperation, right? And so there's no reason that we can't just organize ourselves um, cooperatively, but base it on consent instead of basing the cooperation on force, right? So when an overwhelming number of us are able to take our license plates off on the same day, we can send a very clear message to the ruling class that that we're done being ruled. Um, now, of course, with that comes risk because there is this system that's in place where there are people that believe in government and, and what they will do is they will, <clears throat> they believe that, that their idea of government, which government is their God, it's their deity mm -hmm. because it's, mm -hmm. it's where the, the higher power is and their mm -hmm. higher power has bestowed upon them the, the right to violate the natural laws of human interaction. So yeah, They'll believe they're doing good and they will bring force against you for not complying with every statute and code that the government puts out. And so those of us that do get caught up in the system for it, the idea is we don't show up to traffic court willingly. You know, if you do get pulled over and you do get a ticket, you don't go to traffic court. And then for those of us that don't go to traffic court and then there's a bench warrant that's issued and then we end up we end up in front of a judge anyway, then we demand a trial by jury. And we demand a trial by jury because if they're forcing us in there, then we, we definitely have that right. Because if they're bringing you in in handcuffs, there's no way to say that you consented to the jurisdiction of traffic court. And so you say, hey, I want a trial by jury. And we make up the juries. The juries mm -hmm. have the power of jury nullification. And what that mm -hmm. means is that the jury is there to not just judge the facts of the case, but they're also there to judge the legitimacy of the, of the law. Mm. Right. You've got the judges and the attorneys in court and they they know the law. They went to law school. They're very well versed in the law, but they're not the ones making the decision as to whether or not the defendant is going to be punished. That mm. decision lies with the jury and the jury is there to make the moral decision because they're supposed to really know nothing about the law. They're there to go. Is this the right thing to do? Mm. Because morality is superior to legality. Mm. And if we utilize jury nullification, we can return ourselves to a common law court system and we can mm -hmm. alleviate a lot of the issues that we have today. And we can give ourselves confidence in pushing back against the system with noncompliance if we know that when we go to court, we're going to get a jury and we just need one out of 12 of the jurors to say not guilty. Mm -hmm. And then the government's prevented from um, from prosecuting the defendant. And when the and when they get enough hung juries for a specific behavior, they stop regulating that behavior, right? They don't mm -hmm. even they don't even uh, vote on whether or not to rescind the law. They just say, hey, stop arresting people for this because you know what it's mm -hmm. doing? It's gunking up our revenue stream because the yeah. court system is their revenue stream, right? So mm -hmm. if we gunk that up and then we keep letting each other walk, they're mm -hmm. really going to go hands off because there's no centralized head to the snake for them to go after. It, it's, it's an idea that can permeate throughout um, the population. So anyway, so phase one of this is, is taking off our license plates because you're not facing any real amount of jail time for that. There's no real amount of jail time that you're looking at for not having license plates on your vehicle. And so if we can prove this concept of jury nullification, if we can get this into the idea of the masses, then we can move on to phase two, which is the small business, right? What we need is we need small business owners who, who are very risk adverse. 
um, they're some of the most risk adverse people you'll meet. They cross every T and they dot every I and uh, they make sure that they're they're doing what they're told to do and that they're paying all their dues. Right. They try to hide some of it. But, you know, for the most part, they're paying all their dues because they don't want the force of the government coming down on them. But if we can convince them that we know the power of jury nullification, we know how to protect ourselves. We'll also protect you. So what we want you to do is we want you to burn your business license. We want yeah. you to tell all the all the government agencies you're not involved in my business. Get out of here. Right. Yeah. And and when they stop and when they do that, they can stop collecting sales tax, they can stop collecting income tax, and they can stop paying payroll tax. And when small business gets out from under the tax burden, yes. they'll be able to offer better employment at cheaper prices than the big corporations. And the middle class will come flooding back like crazy. Mm -hmm. And small business then will also learn how to adopt a better currency than the United States dollar because the United mm -hmm. States dollar is losing value every year. It's a dumb currency to use. You have mm -hmm. to work harder as time goes on to receive less of, uh, of a value out of the United States dollar. We, mm -hmm. we like to put a lot of effort in the beginning and have compounding returns, you know, an asset that appreciates in value. Anyway, so when the small business owner gets arrested for not paying, for not recognizing the government or anything like that, when they go into court, then they know that the jury's going to say not guilty. And then they're mm -hmm. back out on the street the next day and they're right back to operating their business. And mm -hmm. it's only a matter of, of getting enough hung juries to get the government to go, ah, we can't regulate that anymore. Right. Right. And when that happens, that permeates through everything. You know, <laughs> you want, you want to end the war on drugs. Yeah. If you want to end the war on drugs, then you can't do that by getting a libertarian politician in mm -hmm. because they're never going to write legislation to cut off one of their own revenue streams, one of their major mm -hmm. revenue streams. You want to if you want to end the war on drugs, you got to get yourself onto a jury. Mm -hmm. And then if it happens to be a case of victimless crime where it's just possession or distribution or production or use of of a. Uh, illegal substance, then um, mm -hmm. you vote not guilty. If they didn't hurt anybody, they shouldn't go to jail. Right. Mm -hmm. And when enough and when enough hung juries for victimless crimes start coming up, the government stops regulating that victimless crime. You know, right. it's it's a sham. It's a sham that we go to the ballot box because people think that's how I vote for the kind of world I want to live in. But that's not how you vote for the world you want to live in. You vote for yeah. the world you want to live in based on the behaviors you engage in. Yes. So by going yes. to the ballot box, what you're saying is, I vote for more government. I vote for more yeah. tyranny. I vote for criminals yeah. to be in charge of my life, right? But if you go, if you go to your license plate on November 5th and you take your license plate off, you're voting for the world you want to live in by saying, you know what, I'm, I'm tired of all agreements being backed by force. I want agreements backed by consent, and that's yeah. the behaviors I'm going to engage in. I won't right. force anybody, and I won't be a victim of anybody's force. Mm. I love, um, I mean, this is a withdrawing from the system. It's, right. you know, we all have, every single one of us has that individual responsibility of pulling back our authority, our power. And even if you do a little bit in the, the driving section, a little bit in the you know, police that are walking on the street section, a little bit in the, you know, calling the cops when you've gotten into fight. We have to like dilute what it means to call the cops as we resist this force and we make decisions. Um, well, yeah, we, this is more you know, of a defense. This is more of a defense. Like they're, ke they're getting us, but, but we have to stop calling them as well. We have to stop relying on them and yeah. Um, yeah. Well, and as as we're able to keep them at bay through the court system, yeah. then what we'll be able to do is we'll be able to to start businesses that compete with the government. You know, everything that only the government's allowed to do, yeah. we'll be able to start businesses that compete with that because we know when those yeah. business owners get arrested by the government, the jury's going to say not guilty. And yeah. we're going to say not guilty because because those guys are are doing it faster, cheaper and better than what the government can do it. Yeah. And so why would we keep putting our money with the government? when it's producing such such failures of what we want, you know, and we can put it with private industry that's gonna do it, that's gonna hold themselves accountable because they're not, they're not holding a gun to our head to take our money to fund their projects. Mm -hmm. They're trying to earn it. 
right? When somebody's holding a gun to your head, whether it be a politician or a mugger in a back alley, they don't concern themselves with being accountable to you because they're stealing your money. But when somebody's trying to earn your cooperation and earn your money, they do concern themselves with accountability because they know they have to answer to you for why you gave them your money. Right. Mm -hmm. And so we we can solve all of these problems, everything that the government says um, that it's doing, it's doing very poorly. And the opposite is the result. And we can come together with better ideas. There's better mm -hmm. ideas than than the DMV to solve the problems of vehicle identification. There's better ideas than the police department to solve the problem of, uh, you know, crime and rehabilitation. You know, there's better ideas in the public school system mm -hmm. on how we should educate children. Mm -hmm. But we're not allowed to enter any any of these ideas without the threat yeah. of force and jail time. And so, again, we can we can yeah. change all of this. We can build a new system right under their noses mm -hmm. if we protect each other with jury nullification. Mm -hmm. So do you think that there's even a, a, a time and a place for uh, holding up the system like there is a place of governance here? Like you're saying, it sounds like there there still will be an infrastructure of governance um well there will be there will be you know i don't I, it's hard to, it's you know i don't want to get caught up on the semantics of what we're calling it yeah okay so governments humans are always going to organize hierarchies right yeah. that's just in our nature that's in our cultural nature to organize hierarchies yeah and i'm i want hierarchies where the leadership is the leadership based on um uh ability right yeah. on competence but what we have in governmental hierarchies is leadership is leaders based on force and threat yes. of force and the yeah. people at the bottom don't have the freedom to walk away when you have hierarchies based on competence then the people at the bottom have the freedom to walk away and go seek out a more common hierarchy that all the same problem the first one was trying to solve okay and this mm. is how we keep innovation going faster right government code slows mm -hmm. us down from doing that it slows down innovation but if we had um, right. hierarchies based on competence, so I don't I don't know if we want to call it governance of some sort or, or whatever you want to say. All I'm saying yeah. is for all of societal issues, I want hierarchies based on competence and, and everybody right. is willing. It's in our nature to gravitate toward the best ideas. And when we remove the mm -hmm. application of force as a way to impose an idea, then the best ideas will gravitate to the top because people will naturally. Yeah move to the best ones and the best ones are always mutually beneficial mm. and we can we well, can solve all of our problems with a mutual beneficial <laughs> attitude because we do live in a world of abundance we don't live yeah. in a world of scarcity we can always have win-win situations yeah that's right well what what happens if we have a somebody that's stubborn and they don't want to follow along like with the hierarchy i mean at what point do you do you um invoke um, force in an in a hierarchy. If we're all well, if we're all meant to be responsible and take care of ourselves, and there is no leader, which I get too, I get both sides. We all have to just grow up and take responsibility and have one moral compass, which is, um, you know, moral moral law, cosmic law, you know, natural law, do no harm. I don't know what the singular. Um, mode or model um behavior the, we, this, yeah the singular uh model behavior for our for our co collective morality our uh mm -hmm. objective morality we all want interactions based on consent and mm -hmm. even those who who violate consent and force themselves on another they don't want to be forced in the same way that they're applying the force mm -hmm. so even though they're going against the morality mm -hmm. they still know the morality to be true I don't want to be forced into anything. Mm. And so everything should be based on with that at the center. Consent needs to be at the center of every yeah. interaction between people. That's our objective yes. morality. That's right. Right, right. So there's no hierarchy though. And I mean, truth is the hierarchy or freedom is the hierarchy. It's what people are all attuned to. So there is a little bit, but I can't see hierarchy between people um, when, when we're talking about anarchists and people becoming, uh, more responsible for their actions and. Well, the, the more, so 
the root of our issue right now as as a society is that we've all deferred the res- our our personal responsibility yeah. onto the government, right? Nobody takes That's responsibility true. for educating their children. They defer yeah. that to the government. You don't take responsibility for your retirement. You deferred that out of your paycheck to some yeah. company that you don't you probably don't even know their name. You know, you don't yeah. you don't take the responsibility of your health. But mm-hmm. as, it, as we train people to be responsible, mm right, to take those personal responsibilities and people naturally act more responsible. And so I'm not saying that we would end up in a perfect world where there is an accident and there isn't conflict, but Mm -hmm. we could overwhelmingly be more responsible and then we would have a a better justice system Mm -hmm. to deal with the times where people do still apply force, where people do break the natural laws of human interaction. And if, if you violate consent, then it's it's just for everybody else to gather together and go we we don't want to accept violations of consent and so there has to be some form of of um group that can that can help rehabilitate the person that violated uh the the natural laws of human interaction right our Mm. current justice system isn't really a justice system because no because the victims rarely receive any sort of remedy and, and the, the criminal is never rehabilitated. It's just about punishment. But mm-hmm. if we had a system where, where remedy for the victim was, was uh, the priority and rehabilitation of the criminal was mm-hmm. priority, because there's ways to rehabilitate people that work really, mm-hmm. really well. Um, right. and, and our current system doesn't do that at all. Uh, yeah. But I would rather be able to put my efforts toward that kind of system instead of being forced to put my efforts toward the current system. Mm, mm. So do you still see a, a, a place for jail and a place for retromanding people that do cause harm or do break natural law? Yeah. And who does that? Yeah. Who's- yeah. So we can, we can have, again, we can have yeah. a system um, but it's voluntarily funded. So I don't think there would be any one organization that did that. But I think what would happen mm-hmm. is that, you know, each community, you know, when, when people aren't stolen from, we're, we're stolen from yeah. at the rate of like damn near 70% of our income, right? Yes! So if you had 70% more of your money back in your pocket, you could look around yeah. and go, okay, which social programs do I want to fund? Yeah. Okay. I want to fund a justice system. So you go to justice system A and they're competing with justice system B. But as long as you have the right to withdraw your funds, that keeps both Mm -hmm. of their officers in line. That keeps both of their officers only behaving in accordance with what the guidelines are. And those guidelines would be you only interact with criminals. You know, you don't have the right. We're not extorting the population to fund our own organization. And so if you're a customer of, of company A, and then you want to withdraw your consent from them and go, you know what, you guys aren't really reflecting my values. Your officers aren't reflecting my values. So I want to put it with company B. And so mm. then you you move your funds around. And that's, mm. that's the other way of how you vote for the kind of world you want to live in is how you spend your money because you get more of where your money goes is the way that it works, right? So now mm. when we get, if you want to get farther and farther into the details, I don't have all the answers for all that. I haven't focused. Yeah, no, you never do because- right? Yeah. But I know there's 7 billion people on the planet. And I bet somebody yeah. out there has got a really good idea that would work yes. really well and just blow the socks off of the numbers that our current system's doing. And that right. is applicable for every problem, right? I, That's you know, right. people always ask about the roads and it's like, I don't have an exact answer as to who's going to build all the roads. But I know that if we come together with consent at the center of our interactions, we're going to have yeah. better roads for cheaper and they're going to get built a lot faster. That's you know, true. I, that- and somebody that, out there has got the right idea. We just need a chance yeah. to hear it so we can gravitate toward it. Yes. And it's withdrawing our our consent, our energy. I mean, that does create a ripple effect in mm-hmm. the manifestation of the reality that we want. And, you know, you said something last week, you know, removing force does not uh, decrease the amount of drunk drivers you know, the, these two things have, we're not saying that we don't need police. We just need to withdraw the the, the force of the police. They need to be right. keeping the peace, going back to what their main goal was, which it's a red herring now. <laughs> I mean, we think right. they're doing one thing and they're not. Like it's, um, it's when you really think about it, it's, it's asinine to think that 
applying force to regulate cooperative behaviors will ever achieve peace. No. Right. No. If you we have to apply consent if we want to regulate cooperative behaviors. We only right. uh, apply force to regulate forceful behaviors, right? Because mm -hmm. that's what you're getting back. If you apply force, you get force back. If you apply mm -hmm. consent, you should get consent back. Mm. That's right. So we have the part one. Did we go into part two of, um, I mean, what happens? So what are you going to do on the day itself, on, Ga on Guy Fox Day? I mean, how did you pick that date? Was that just uh. a bit random? Well, it was, it's the date of the next election. And then it just worked oh, out to right. be Guy Fox Day. And it worked, you know, yeah. um, V for Vendetta is Remember, Remember the 5th of November. Yes. You know, so I thought yeah. that was all kind of neat. Um, so are you you going to have any stickers or anything that's... No, the, um, way, the way we visually signal to each other that we're participating is you won't have a license plate on your car. Yeah. Yes. Right? See, I don't want to do I don't want to do stickers. I don't want to do T-shirts. I don't want to do things yeah. along those lines, because in order to do that, I've got to start yeah. using the United States dollar to, to make all that. Yes. happen. And I want to move yes. away from the United States dollar. Yes. So the, the yes. easy thing, the cheap thing, the fast thing, and it doesn't interfere with your day at all. You just I mean, yeah. unless you unfortunately, you're one of the ones that get pulled over. But if enough of us start, if this makes a big enough wave. They're all going to yeah. know what they're looking at when everybody's driving around without license plates on. And they're not going to want, you know, I think a, a significant portion of the 700,000 police officers, full-time police officers nationwide. Um, I think a significant portion of them will agree with what the movement is mm -hmm. and what the movement stands for and won't even bother pulling any of us over. And then those that do pull you over, you know, just take your, take your ticket and uh, sign it and then be on your way. And then just don't yeah. go to traffic court because you're not bound by the agreement, by the promise to appear because you were coerced into it through force. So even by yeah. their own rule, it's not binding. Um, Can we talk a little bit about how, um, I mean, it is really important that we do something because the wheels on the, the, the freight train, I mean, I see the laws that are being passed through now the UN, the WHO, um, they've always been here. They've always been being passed. We now have people alerting the the fact that our reality is being woven together by uh psychopathic maniacs <laughs> yeah and this is just one of their tentacles that we can we can address uh physically because everything that we react and engage with in our reality is is rippling out to the greater cosmos um so the cops are just uh one tenant to this um, can you talk a little bit about what is happening right now in, in our 3D reality? It seems like they're setting up a brand new civilization right underneath our um, yeah. our eyes. And yeah, what are your thoughts on what's being created right now? Well, uh, you know, people that seek control, it's never enough control. They always want more. And uh, they are masters at manipulating our minds. And they've, they've coerced us all to start building our own prisons. And... Um, I think after we build the infrastructure, they want a lot of us dead. This is what the, the point is of a, a lot of these global wars. Um, I don't follow the details of all the wars that are going on about, mm -hmm. the, you know, the reasons why, because ultimately I believe that they're, you know, they're all orchestrated by the same puppet master. They're okay. just turning us against each other to kill off all the able-bodied men that, that would stand mm -hmm. against them. Um, and so, what I see going on in, in our world is that we have this, this global population that's, that's suffering, that um, the earth is dying and, um, you know, there's, a, there's misery that, that abounds. And the nature of life is to be abundant, right? The earth keeps growing. The earth is a living thing and it keep, kept progressing with life and progressing with life. And the fact mm. that the earth is, is getting sick right now is not mm. because of, uh, you know, because it's because of us, but not because of um, what we, the average person, are doing, right? It's not the mm -hmm. end user's fault. What it is is the, on the production side. And what's on the production mm -hmm. side are these massive companies that are um, polluting the earth with government protection because the government stops mm -hmm. other people from competing with, with the technologies that are out there that are really damaging the earth. And so, and so what I see that's going on is this massive agenda to cause sickness, and to damage mm -hmm. the earth and to damage humanity and, and to yeah. enslave all of us. Because as we keep yeah. adopting their tools and we keep yeah. uh, letting them fill us mm -hmm. with fear, 
Yeah. Right. And as we keep using all of our efforts and funding all these wars, I mean, on some mm-hmm. level, we're all culpable because yeah. we keep funding these wars. These wars yeah. would not happen without our cooperation. Yeah. That's right? right. Yeah. And so it's it's. What's going on is they're trying to 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 steer us away from from our true utopia, not utopia. I don't like using that word, but it could really be a paradise, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. And um, so that's where I'm at. I, I'm I'm against all wars. I want all bombs to stop dropping. And yeah. uh, you know, I want to put if we spend a fraction of the money we spend on war, if we just spent that on peace, we that's what we would have. Globally. Yeah, yeah. You know, we could. It's more than peace. It's more than peace, though, Stephen, because we're talking fifth generation warfare. And I mean, I'm not manifesting this when I talk about it. I'm we have to shine a light on the issue for us to fix the issue. And right. there's not a lot of people that are actually looking at the issue like you are intimately looking at the issue and creating a solution that is nonviolent and that is actually effective uh, to the cause, I have a, an idea that I put together, which is just an ebook educating newlyweds as they walk down that path of getting married. That you are now signing a contract with the state, and yeah, there is no need except for sometimes you get lower taxes, but they do suck you in. But yeah, you have to understand from my perspective what, what's this doing? What does this marriage certificate mean? How is that going to impact us as our family in the years to come, especially in the years to come as these laws are being pushed through society. Now they're being pushed through the corporations, through the local council, uh, ICLE and IEEE and all the local governance is what's being run and, um, you know, used by the U- the UN and the who, um, and those are the local changes that are coming out into our reality. And so, yeah, the, the cops are part of the, um, the reality, the, the, the Caliuga. They're the sword of the state. Down. Yeah. So do you have any thoughts about that, about how it, the, the matrix is on one hand, it is coming down, but it's coming down on, on purpose. There is a reason behind that. And we're kind of stuck here <laughs> watching the show. Yeah, it's certainly an exciting time to be alive. Yeah. And uh and, and yeah. you know, it, it really I it it's gonna go one of two drastic ways. Yeah. Uh we're we're either gonna come together and, and we're gonna create this this world where we um we've uh emotionally evolved on beyond the need for a ruling class. Um, because we have the technology to be able to do that. You know, Google mm-hmm. Translate gives us the abilities to speak the same language. And the yeah. more people that you can communicate with, the more cooperation we can have. And the more cooperation mm-hmm. we have, the the more abundance we live in. And and so the less yeah. poverty exists. And the less poverty exists, the less trauma there is, right? And so the less trauma yeah. there is, the the better off we all are. Yeah. Or we're going to take the other path and we're going to end up... Uh, under under the thumb, you know, the digital thumb, the social credit scores, the yeah. 15 minute cities, restrict all yeah. movement, restrict all diet. Yeah. You can't spend your money outside of a certain radius, yeah. you know, all sorts of crazy stuff. Yeah. You you said something um less trauma. And I will tell you if we if we remove this inner core of the police, our trauma will go down. Uh, Mm because it is traumatic getting pulled over by the cops or getting any kind of interaction with those men in uniforms. It is a very traumatic thing, especially going into the court system. You walk in and you're like, whoa, now this is a game that's being played. And I don't know for you, Stephen, but my heart, you know, skipped a few beats going through that process. My heart races every time, every time, Yeah, you know, and, and for most people, you know, the, the best thing to point out to most people is that every time a police officer comes up behind you in your rearview mirror, you never feel safe and protected. You start yeah. thinking what I do wrong. Is he going to get me? Am I going to yeah. get penalized for something stupid? You know, yeah. and, and you all know deep down yeah. inside, you didn't, you didn't hurt anybody. So you yeah. shouldn't. Yeah. Nobody has the right to punish you if you didn't hurt anybody because yeah. without an injured party, there's no complaint. Yeah, that learning the tenets of anarchy like really relieved a lot of like subconscious fear. Like I was like, oh, okay, I'm not, I'm not doing anything wrong. You know, there's this subconsciousness that's what I do. You know? Yeah. Oh, the day I returned my driver's license, I was losing my mind at night. I go, what did I do? Why, why did I do that? What? Yeah. What am I thinking? 
Yeah, that was a. But all you're doing is, I mean, you're not. We're not doing anything that difficult. We're just removing our allegiance and our authority. And like I said, wearing my badge, and you know, we need to dilute their power, mm -hmm. especially now, whilst we're like. And we yeah, dilute it through. Of... We yeah. dilute it through cooperation. Yeah. Right. And and you know the police. The police, oh, an overwhelming number of police officers, I believe, went into the force with altruistic intentions. They wanted to be the good guy. Their in, their good intentions got hijacked, and now they're they're being the bad guy. But they're still, most of them are still bound to a certain amount of morality, mm -hmm. right? And so we can push back against them, um, and if we do it in the right way, because most of the police officers don't actually want to get into physical alter altercations with the public um mm. we we can prevent so much of their ability you know the the psychopaths ability to bring force against us they would be mm. hard pressed to have them the the politicians would be very hard pressed to convince police officers to start shooting people for not having license plates yeah. right yeah. most police officers yeah. are going to go no, no no that's against the law because yeah. because remember the police officers believe in the government so yeah so it's not that the politician directly is in control of the police officers. They have to, you know, it's the same thing that um, priests used to do with, with God. You know, uh, you could only get people to commit so much evil because people know that the priest is just a communicator with God, mm. not the one that the authority comes from. And so, so police officers on some level have that view on politicians that they're, um, mm. they're not the government. They're just this representation of the government, you know, mm. Stephen, this is a good opportunity to cut in to introduce you to Derek. Hi, Derek. Hey, <laughs> Derek there. How's it going? You guys Derek. are amazing. Thanks so much for coming. And um, Derek, we were just talking to Stephen about his brilliant idea about removing our force from this authority, the, the people wearing the costumes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, yeah, I was just talking about how this is a really good time to do it whilst we're sort of still a uh, little bit in control of our um, free free will and our thoughts uh, and our actions. Now we should be doing these things that are non-violent, but effective. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> yeah, pretty good. Thank you so much. And um, <laughs> yeah, if I caught, caught you correctly, Stephen, how's it going? <clears throat> um, yeah. Yeah, talking about false authorities and yeah, obviously one of the first steps is to recognize what they are and what they represent and how it's taken us away from our true sovereign authority of our own selves. We're supposed yeah. to be sovereign beings and, and all these things. And so, yeah, how can we appeal to these false figures of authority and the people like the chain of command people underneath them? If we kind of like, like taking the rug underneath the feet of these people in a sense, you know, like, yeah, uh, as far as, you know, reaching out to our brother, fellow brother, sister, that's in even like, think of, you know, systems of that has order followers, right? In the mm -hmm. medical, uh, police and military and all these things. If we're able to kind of reason with them in any kind of way, show them the mirror of like, hey, do you guys understand what you're involved in? And you're not on the right side of humanity, right. unfortunately, no matter how much you're getting paid for that and this and that, like, are, are you trying to be on the side of morality or what? Kind of things because yeah. uh now it's a pretty good time to make a pretty decisive life decision in a sense and yeah does that make sense yes yeah well i've uh you know applying that strategy I've, I've had a lot of success with my most two recent interactions with police officers was i i completely ignored um the law and the legality of everything and i reached them on the human level man to man you know w what's the right thing here you know and and when you do that it it, it helps shift their perspective a little bit because a lot of these guys you know have the same problem they every day they're they're forced between making the legal decision or the moral decision mm -hmm. and uh, most of the time those two don't line up you know if it's chasing down a purse snatcher that lines up you know it's lawful and it's legal but when it's when it's you know we're talking about the regulation of peaceful behavior that's mm -hmm. that's illegal or it's moral and mm -hmm. so when we when we kind of pull that curtain back and, and we we ignore their legalities and we just try to reach them as a human, then the human side can come out. And our human side, we don't, we, free humans are cooperative. 
and compassionate and we work together, right? It's the, mm. it's the slave humans that aren't. It's like, um, you know, a lion in the zoo has different characteristics than, or personality characteristics than a lion in the wild. And usually it's worse. And mm. so we need more free humans out there and we need to reach the, the free human side of, of people um, instead of this captive human that we have mm. that's creating all the, the illness in our world. Mm. I have a I have a question, you guys. So, Derek, you were talking about when you were talking just now. I was thinking, what is the the police? Because there's a lot of police. What are they going? What are they going to go through when they have that aha moment that their role is not only meaningless but is actually causing harm to the human species? We have police, we have doctors, especially doctors, nurses, teachers, all these glamorous roles uh, that we need to withdraw from. And what are your thoughts on that policeman that has Yeah, this <laughs> it's going to be quite the dark night of the soul for a lot of yeah. these uh, people. And uh, I'm sure you guys have seen the movie or the little short clip of uh, that's on the internet uh, in shadow. And they recently released a new one called a kingdom it's like an animated mm. short mm. Well, i haven't seen it i Ooh. haven't seen it either all right yeah i should definitely check that out i can yeah. leave a link uh in the chat yeah when next time you guys are talking but uh it it shows you know people purging all the the falsehoods and, and all the indoctrinations all the programming all the conditioning mm. propaganda and all that stuff <clears throat> and they kind of visualize it like kind of like like spewing up all this black sludge or whatever yeah and then it was like the people, you know, kind of like us, first and foremost, to kind of, you know, stand up and hold a torch for others to see. And it has that ripple effect. And mm -hmm. then the, the people on the puppet strings started to realize that. And eventually they kind of crumbled and collapsed and had that fucking purging of thing. And that would that kind of stuff can almost like kill a person because it's just like too much to over. It's like overbearing or whatever you want to call it. Right. So <laughs> it was cool to see how. You know, there is that compassion for those that have kind of woken from that terrified slumber and we're there to show compassion for these other tortured souls that mm -hmm. were really having a, a strong hand into the manipulation and stuff. So mm -hmm. for us to be as a truth community, freedom community, whatever, mm -hmm. and having, you know, that open hand for those that <clears throat> really want to redeem themselves, you know, <clears throat> I think that's going to appeal to people to kind of really step out of these uh, programs of domination and control and the divine conquer tactics and all that stuff, even if they're not currently aware that they're participating in that. Right. Yeah. So, well, yeah. you know, I think there's a lot of guys that are aware that they're participating in it. They mm. just don't know what to do about it. And, mm. you know, as, as part of my phase two plan to help people open up business that competes with government organizations, I, I believe there's a significant number of, you know, police officers out there that are going to be the torch bearers for other police officers going, Hey, that thing you wanted to do, Here's a way we can do it without having to, to violate the, the community, right? Mm -hmm. So hopefully there will be some police officers that wake up and say, okay, let's start, let's start a, a organization that deals with actual crime mm -hmm. and, um, and then create a prosperous business that way. And then, you, and then the police officers that are on that border that want to wake up, that, that know that something's just not right, can gravitate toward those organizations and put put their skills to good instead mm. of allowing their skills to be used for what it's used for now. Mm. Yeah. You said you were talking about the businesses coming together and that was one of the things I was teaching people all throughout the pandemic, all through after, I mean, after now they're just getting right back on their feet, but we need to educate businesses on the illegitimacy of working in the public realm and how much we can become authoritarian in our own reality if we just move into the private realm and mm -hmm. just walk away from that illusion and really start to create a brand new reality based on our knowledge of how this game is being worked and played. But we need all participants playing this. If we're going to create strong infrastructure uh, and we're only as weak as our, we're only as strong as our weakest link in terms of, strategy and and you know i i can i can hang out with a friend and talk about this topic like the whole entire time yeah you know and then and then i can then be with other people who they don't want to think about it 
uh, the what they focus on, they manifest. <laughs> you know, you can't just ignore the issues that we are facing. And never in my time was I told that your your issues get fixed if you don't do anything. <laughs> you know, <laughs> we got to yeah. do stuff. We got to fix this uh, situation and move in a new direction because it's not going to. You know, and it starts with our minds and our actions and being the change that we want to be. And and it's so we have a lot of lazy people around sometimes. Um. Yeah. Well, <laughs> but that's the that's the the beauty of the the side of jury nullification, right? Understanding the power in that, that's because right. the few of us that are willing to stand up and and take a, a you know a punch in the face, um, those that that are afraid to stand up would still have enough courage to be able to serve on a jury and say not guilty. I don't know how the justice system in the UK or in France works, but um, you know, here, here in America, there is jury nullification. So when the mm -hmm. jury says not guilty, even the most timid of people that want freedom know they can serve on a jury and say not guilty. And there's no risk to them yeah. for doing that. And so the more that happens, the more people will start waking up. So we don't need everybody to get this ball rolling. Mm. We just need a small percentage of people to get the ball rolling. And, mm. and again, yeah. as we see that there's safe avenues for us to get to where yeah. we can gravitate toward the mutually beneficial ideas, people will gravitate toward it as long as they know they're not going to yeah. get, you know, beat over the head for doing it. Yeah. Well, that's why I was doing my stuff in, in Australia. I thought I may as well stretch my muscle here because the, the people, the cops that are wearing the costumes aren't so, um, arrogant, violent. It's in my language. I mean, Derek, I can't, well, I don't want to any, use any negativity, but I'm sure it's more difficult standing in your freedom with a French person in a costume uh, than it would be. Well, America seems to be a little bit more aggressive in their authority, but Australia, like, you got it, May. You know, it was so super simple. So I thought I would challenge what's the test bed that we are faced with um, if we don't address this situation. Um, so yeah, how is it like in France with uh, all this? Uh, well, yeah, to go off of what you were talking about, um, to be honest, when I, I've been living here since 2010, I knew it since 2008, really. Uh, I studied abroad too hard, if you will. <laughs> but uh, uh, for, for the longest time, uh, my impression, it was kind of a, I wouldn't say a joke, but they they look uh, really tame and domesticated in all this stuff compared to police in America. I mean, I'm from California mm. and uh, they just, uh, police in America, they're really intimidating. They seem to be all over the place, like prowling around and this and that. In France, mm -hmm. they're not easily seen sometimes. But then in later years, especially with all the false flags and uh, what is it like? Yeah. Uh, yeah, there were some shootings in the uh, Paris yeah. stuff. That there was, was right some Eiffel after Tower Eiffel stuff Eiffel. happening. I, yeah, so there's a huge, that. you know, this is the he Hegelian dialectic, you know, problem, reaction, solution. Yeah, the solution to that is, oh, we gotta, you know, pump more, uh, you know, stolen public money, a la taxpayer dollar euros, to uh, militarize the police more. So they became a little bit more you know, intimidating and, and stuff, and like. Mm -hmm. Their clown like old cars, you know, got replaced with, you know, more muscle or whatever. Yes. Want, you know? <laughs> and actually, in recent times, I was, uh, yeah, sorry, I was late. Uh, my girlfriend was over for a visit and, uh, and she's been telling me and I like, confirmed it today. Like, they passed a law that literally says that, uh, you can get penalized up to like 30,000 euros and spend time in jail if you criticize, uh, medical treatments, that kind of shit. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. So That's where the fuck are we holding right accountable for this poison Neil craft and all this motherfucking bullshit? Mm. It's absolutely insane, draconian and all that stuff. And so, yeah, it's like a lot of countries that have been disarmed and this and that, they become, you know, domesticated over time, even though there is quite a fighting and independent spirit in France. Well, it's would... a hard hit, you know, since the dawning of the Rona and all that. And yeah. that, sucks because it sucked out all the wind of the, yeah. the yellow jacket movement. Yeah. I was, was getting worldwide. I was really impressed. Probably dropped the hammer of Rona, I think, you know? Yeah. 
Gossy. I was very impressed with the uh, with the yellow with the yellow vest movement. I was I wanted to actually ask you about that, Ken, because I did see that that was so big in 2019. Plus, we had the Hong Kong protests going on at the same time, and then yeah. boom, all of a sudden, you know, Rona pops up and yeah. uh, shuts a lot of this a lot of these movements down. So, I mean, I kind of have high hopes for the French. You know, over here in yeah. America, mm -hmm. I'm I'm in California too, so we might be. You know, we were neighbors, I guess, at one point practically. Um, you know, yeah. I have high hopes for the French because. Be, you know, even here in America, we kind of make fun of them all the time as being like sissies. But in reality, I mean, they were doing way more during 2019 than what we were doing. Yeah. So it, I, I would love to hear a little bit about that. Oh, yeah. Thank you. And uh, it was really interesting. I was really encouraged and inspired by how they were getting some grassroots organizations going, you know, in whatever communities. And you would see people taking over, you know, private and public uh, facilities and even the, uh, you know, in uh, there's like pay tolls to, you know, use parts of the freeway. They took that shit over. Like, no, nah, no one's paying a damn fucking dime for that shit. Everyone passes for oh, free. Good for them. They, they yeah. set up shop and stuff. They had like bonfires here and there, you know, like yeah. serving food and barbecue and stuff, having a good time, playing music even. So it wasn't all like vigilante and what people have an erroneous idea of, you know, the term anarchy, you know which actually means, you know, absence of, you know, slave masters, mm -hmm. which, you know, equals freedom, but self-ownership for sure. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So it was, it was really cool to see people come together and like, I was inspired to just see like, okay, I'm going shopping. I'm gonna pick up a couple items here. And, you know, cause I know I'm going to pass by a group of yellow jackets. Unfortunately, I did not have all the free time in the world to spend with them, but it's like, here, have this, this free guys, enjoy whatever, like water, even beer, wine, what yeah <laughs> we awesome. have all the baguettes over here but you know like <laughs> awesome. awesome yeah so well, it's really cool to see some continuity yeah yeah sure. a lot of yeah. different people age ranges yeah yeah well france is um dealing with the farming situation right now um gen 2030 i live on a farm here and we're not being impacted by any of this stuff but germany france um is that trickling down to where you are? Are you seeing any of that, Derek? Or is that, um, it's not on mainstream, obviously. I haven't seen like the effects of, you know, higher prices and this and that. The mm -hmm. price range is quite moderate. You know, I can, I go yeah. shopping mostly for, you know, vegetables mm -hmm. and fruits at local farmer's markets and all that. And they're mm -hmm. like super legit. Uh, but uh, I've seen videos and actually, <laughs> I showcased it in like I make a lot of videos like with music and all that stuff. Uh, there's one, a couple uh, protests or demonstrations, if you will, where they brought in the tractors with a shitload of manure aimed, aimed at yes. like these government yeah. buildings. Maybe y'all seen that, but it's like yeah, yeah and like they were blocking the roads and it's like no. And see the thing is with France, uh, I mean one of the things that's been written into the constitution is the right mm -hmm. to uh, protest. And they they've stuck uh, by that, you know, tooth and nail since it was uh, created and stuff. So, yeah, that's why France is infamous of like, oh, they're on another strike and this and that. Oh, oh, you're on vacation and wanted to take a train from Paris to wherever. Oh, sorry, you came on the strike day. And that kind of, <laughs> we all heard about that. But, you know, there are, I guess, cool things about it of, you know, like, People coming together be like, okay, we're gonna write a manifesto of we we're gonna protest this and that. They send it to whatever jurisdiction, bureaucrat, you know, polytrichian, whatever the fuck. <laughs> and they'll be like, okay, yeah, uh, you can have this state, whatever. We'll have our police kind of mm -hmm. be off to the side and let you do your mm -hmm. thing and we can close off certain roads for you and that kind of stuff as well. So mm -hmm. yeah. But then you might think, well, okay, then that could be kind of a convolution of, you know, government help with the protests. So yeah. there's like a, you know, conflict of interest sometimes, if you will. But well, yeah, you know, it's better than nothing. And obviously, if people see that, uh, people fighting against the system or whatever, that could, you know, inspire mm -hmm. others. Kind of like how we had those, mm -hmm. you know, things prop, pop up with the yellow jacket, you know, but... Mm -hmm. Those things can get easily co-opted, just like the Occupy movement mm -hmm. and all these things. So, yeah, but it was starting to get out of control, which is why they, you know, they dropped the the Rona hammer. I think. Mm. Yeah, that was. I mean, that was certainly part of it. But but protesting 
forming large groups and protesting together, it puts the large groups at risk because, I mean, countless times you see these these peaceful protests and, and they're peaceful up until the point the police show up. And then all oh. of a sudden they stop being peaceful, right? Um, and protesting at its core is begging. It's asking permission, right? Yeah. It, yes, so we, need to, we need to shift from protesting to just changing our behaviors. You know, yeah. I love seeing the farmers spray all the all the manure all over the government buildings. You know, that was a lot of fun to watch. But I'm thinking, why are you guys there asking permission? Just yes, just go do yes. what you already know is right to do. Yes, that's just ignore these people out of existence. You know, the, the pro because protesting is kind of like this weird type of force. It um, government knows how to respond to force. Yeah. And so it's like the ballot box. It's a trap for our minds. They tell us the way to, to fix the system is to protest, yeah. but that doesn't. That that yeah. gets us more focused on the system. Yeah. You know, and and so it's behavioral changes all the way. Let's ignore them out of it. And when we can't ignore them because they're bringing force against us, we can protect each other through the jury box. Yeah. Jury box activism. There's That's what I'm pushing for. I, I'm not even uh, there's a bit of begging that comes from there's like this really ugly wet fish lazy uh non-responsible fl flabby i don't know just mindset of those who are still begging for other people yeah. to sort this stuff out we we have to sort out ourselves okay. our bodies minds spirits and souls need a whole readjustment and we need to be talking about this situation so we can shine a light what what our issues are and walk in a brand new direction um, away from where we're at now. That's the whole, that's the whole game here is figuring out, Oh, that's what's going on here. Okay. Okay. So now what do we do? And I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I was awake on my own in Australia in a foreign country. It's not a very fun place to be, but we're four years down the path. Now we should be talking about this situation and being open about the strategy and, come together a little bit more than where we're at now in my opinion oh i we do well the the you know the system is is really really good at keeping us divided and keeping yeah. us you know thinking each other's the problem you know there's that there's that great meme where where there's three people sitting at a table and the guy in the middle looks like the politician he's got a plate full of cookies and then there's uh <laughs> there's an, another dude with like two or three cookies and one guy with uh one cookie and the politician's looking at the guy with one cookie going, hey, this guy over here is trying to steal your cookie, you know, and he's the one hoarding it all. And so it's keeping it's keeping them fighting each other instead of looking and going, oh, it's it's the politicians that are uh, that are the problem. Um, but, yeah, we do need to we do need to come together. And, you know, what it would I'm hesitant on the the armed revolution people, because mm -hmm. an armed revolution at best will only swap out the current tyrants for new tyrants, because yeah. no matter no matter what, war is the birth mother of um, of mm -hmm. government. You know, at its core, government is is somebody telling one group of people that they should be afraid of those people over there. And um, mm. so, is if we keep that idea going, uh, we're going to keep perpetuating government, which will just keep leading to what we have. You know, yeah. more and more of what we have. So yeah. we need to come together, and we need to choose a a cooperative path um, toward peace, because only peace will produce peace. Yeah. You know, it, it, you know, trees by the fruit that it bears and, and force never produces peace. Yeah. It yeah. just produces more force. Yeah. It's super simple. I mean, the notion of surprise attack is easy to comprehend. And then you go into, well, where is the war? What is the war? Why, why is the war? And then you just pull it back from there. And at the very heart of all of this, we all need to upgrade our thinking, whether you're in politics and you're a left or right person whether you're a Christian, Jew, Mo whatever, Muslim, even every single religion under the book, every single career, unless it's your own secret sauce, meaning you've done it from the very early ages or you've, you've made something of yourself from midlife crisis. But, you know, we, we need to be doing something other than, you know, the roles that they have hand fed us. Mm -hmm. And so it's super simple. I figured out what the solutions were in all of the areas that we need to rebuild. It's getting the ego out of the way of the other people to recognize that this is what the issue is. Allow the other person to figure this out on your behalf and then offer all you need to do is do this. 
Mm-hmm. It's not that that's the, um, the the best way of doing it, but we're at a point in life where we don't have time for you to research whether or not what I'm saying is true. <laughs> well, in in the the you know with all of our cooperation and, and doing and working together like that, we also one one important aspect too is we got to keep a focus on the children. Yes. Because one generation full of freedom minded children yeah. will will put an end to all of it. You know, we yeah. just need one generation to to come around. And so and so all the things that we're doing, we got to remember we're teaching our kids at the same time. This is how, how you protect uh, sovereignty yeah. and 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 free yourselves from the system. Yeah. And it's entertainment. Yeah. It's movies. It's everything. I mean, I sometimes get, you know, just because I'm seeing it from a higher perspective and I'm looking to see where the clues are in the movie. But we, we need to get back to silence back into control of our minds. Oh, Derek, your music is amazing. I mean, listen to some of the music. That's New Earth Entertainment. You know, we need- Edutainment, I like to say. Huh? Hey. <laughs> yeah, that, we need to be creating new consciousness. And um, that again, it's the ego of the other people that go, oh, I don't, that's your reality. You're, you're, you know, I'm not in your, no, we are sharing this reality here. <laughs> And there's one enemy. Uh, there's, you know, when you look at it, it is, it's quite a sly operation that they've pulled yeah. off. Yeah, and and uh, you know, all those things like the movies, the music, and all that. Those are those are just tools that we've been using um, to disempower children, which eventually disempowered ourselves. You know, um, yeah. and we could use all those same tools to empower. You know, we just need to take our responsibilities back and and yeah. go. You know, we're go- we're going to organize on a much you know, better, better scale. Yeah. Yeah. Cause the, yeah. Spiritual warfare 101, right? Uh, right. It's a war on our minds. If we take it to the Hermetica, the first cosmic law principle, all is mind. So mm-hmm. how is our state of mind and how is the fertile soil of these young minds growing up and how can we, you know, really make that shift? You know, Stephen, I, I love the fact that, you know, it could be so simple. All it takes is a generation. Hey, conscious parents yeah. out there, let's get it cracking, you know, like <laughs> yeah. in all mediums of how they're going to learn. There's so many modalities for kids to <clears throat> be educated and outside of the common rotten core, you know, curriculums of, you know, indoctrination in a sense in, in what's the criteria these days to go to even a public school? You have to get, you know, jabbed up how many times or whatever. Yeah. Like, what the hell? You know, it's unfortunate. So, uh, yeah, I've had some wonderful contacts uh, doing my other podcast that I do called Dissolving the Divide, which is, you know, to counteract all these divide and conquer dialectics and go one by one of, you know, all these, you know, you know, what is it? Veganism versus meatheads or whatever people want to, you know, be divided against because, you know, that's causing the friction of why we're not so united because the negative right. side of the ego, like you guys were alluding to, is preventing us to really just come back to, down to earth on some solid common grounds like yeah. universal natural law yeah. that we can, you know, march on the right path towards freedom, you know, with that proper morality, objective yeah. morality, if you will. But yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and not ignoring the issues as well. Just not putting your I mean, we can't be putting our head in the sand, at least at the very least, start praying for Mother Earth because she is getting a pummelton. She's, you know, I don't know if you're watching the, the weather manipulation, the geoengineering. You know, we need to hold space for these people that are being impacted by the abuse and, you know, resolve, resolve the next wave because they're, they're you know, the, the People in Australia last year when we had the flooding, as soon as we were able to come up for air, um, the local council came in to start planning, to start giving loans out. I'm like, dude, keep an eye out. You know, when when we're low, they're going to come in and yeah. rebuild, build back better, whatever their slogan is for those those people. So we, we need to, this is our, an opportunity to spark with the divine um, knowledge, gnosis of, uh, creating a brand new reality bring well, forth the master builders yeah go see and, you. and we really you know along the lines that you're talking about sheena if we want to change all that it's not about ignoring them it's about defunding them yeah 
you know, they're every every atrocity they're committing is committed with our combined efforts. And it wouldn't be possible without us lending our efforts. And so it's it's yeah, we don't want to keep our heads in the sand because that leaves your ass in the air. And you know what's gonna happen then, you know. Um, but we do need to to defund. And again, that's the easiest place to start is with the DMV. Easiest place to start is with the DMV. Just stop paying them. Take and we could take our license plates off globally. You know, and that would send shivers down the spine of every politician out there to go, oh yeah. shit, our our game is up. They've yeah. they finally turned on us because they don't care that we're fighting each other when we're all standing in the line to pay our taxes. Yeah. You know, yeah. they don't care. So once we turn on them and, and turning on them isn't even, uh, you know, turning on them. It's I guess it's more turning away because we're just saying, yeah. you know what? I'm not going to pay anymore. I'm not yeah. I'm not going to let I, I have no control over all the bombs that get dropped. I have zero control. There's nothing I can do to stop it. But what I can do is stop lending my efforts to that outcome. And the more of us yeah. that do that, the less bombs that drop. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I mean. And we all need to lean on each other right now for everyone to move out of this situation, but we still need to be moving out of the situation. We can't be ignoring. Yeah. I mean, it's not going away. The situation will just get worse and worse if we continue to not focus on not only what our solutions are, but why do we have these solutions? It, it, it inter I, I say that the enemy has conquered every bit of consciousness, any corner of every corner of consciousness. We need to rebuild with a brand new set of um, ideas and standards. And yeah, we, we got to come out of this reality and create a brand new reality. And there's not very many people at the realm here knowing what we do and then doing it. Um, I mean, you guys are. <laughs> well, there's, there's a lot of people having I think conversations. We need more people. Like what, what kind of, yeah, yeah, that's good. Where where do you think we're at uh, on a on a global stage now? You know, this fifth generation warfare. Well, what right now think? I think we're losing. Yeah. You know, we're losing big time. Uh, but we but mm -hmm. if we start applying fifth generation tactics and start start uh, you know getting our minds back, uh, then yeah. then. You know, it's going to go one of two ways, but either way it goes, it's going to be drastically different than than what life has been up to this point. Yeah. Yeah. And people really got to watch out for this, you know, transhumanist agenda and all that stuff, yeah. which is tied in with the alpha, alphabet mafia and all this AI crap. And <clears throat> Facebook's a, a damn cesspool with advertisements about that now. Yeah. So, yeah. These are the choices we really have to make. Are you going to be on the side of humanity or, you know, this false reality that <clears throat> is going to perpetuate even more human enslavement that we already have right now? Mm. Yeah. In the digital, the digitization of, you know, all our interactions. I mean, how many profiles and accounts do we have to have to access certain things that we never had to in the past? You know, like That's the hell. Right. That's right. Yeah, that's... um it's like we have to maneuver between these two realities and and i i feel like humanity is really still just going through the shock of what just happened um nobody's really saying i think this is stockholm syndrome on yeah <laughs> on the overdrive but yeah we need to address the situation head on and realize that that, that this is not not the end of it um that's kind of exhausting <laughs> knowing that we're, we're not going to, you know, it's never going to end. <laughs> not well, in this lifetime. I mean, it, it might, I'm optimistic about it. Um, yeah. yeah. I think it could, it very well could. I mean, we could, we could have, you know, instead of starting with 7 million on November 5th, what if we started globally with, with a hundred million, what if a hundred yeah. million people on November 5th globally took their license plates off? Yeah. We would certainly, we would certainly be on the right path. To where at least our children and our grandchildren will be able to experience it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't drive anymore because of this reason. I've decided to re remove my energy. Um, oh, good. But the people that I am around, um, 
you know, everyone's on their own path, but I, I wish that it would be easier and easy for people to make that final decision. Um, and somebody asked me the other day, cause I was taking the train. She goes, well, will you be spending money? Will you be, um, you know, ignoring the fine for the, or ignoring the payment for the train? And I said, no, 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 no. There's a difference between paying for a product that you use and then not asking permission to do something that you're supposed to do. You right. know, I said, do you see those two different behaviors? And, and that becomes, you know, we have to become more present with our discernment process, with where are we getting our information from? How are we making decisions? Are you even aware of the decisions that you're making and the knowledge that's coming into your brain? And even if it's just thinking about Jesus or thinking about the aliens that are coming, it's still thinking about something other than what we need to be thinking about right. with which is uh, a new reality. So uh, any now. final thoughts, man, uh, gentlemen, as we conclude this chat, but it's not going to be the last chat that we have. Cause I think I, I love chatting about this with you guys. Yeah, for sure. I'll just say real quick that, you know, like all these rabbit hole and red pills and all the corruption and all this stuff, it's a, it can be a whirlwind of information and just like, confusion even and things to wrap your head people's head around and even just like finding solutions through all that stuff and <clears throat> how are we able to you know recenter you know be calm amidst all the chaos yeah not we could see these things as daunting sure and yes it's there's so much entanglement and like a i like mm -hmm. to refer a lot of times to you know all the all these conundrums the fuckery and stuff it's like this uh the gordian knot are you familiar with that term? Mm -hmm. Just like all the all the fabrics of society, they're so entangled in, you know, so much confusion, corruption, and all this stuff. So how do we untangle it? It's a it's a really good allegory from like Greek mm. mythology, I think. but um, the solution. It's sometimes you just got to take that sort of truth and cut right fucking through it and start anew. Mm -hmm. and, and yeah, I think we can build something way better than what we have, and we have so much information at, the, at our fingertips and lessons to be learned from the past where we can avoid all the pitfalls and, and mistakes from the past to create a more hermetically sealed society, mm -hmm. you know? That's not bound by fucking religious dogma or gruberment and stuff with grubby hands, you know, reaching into our pockets for every fucking transaction, whatever the yeah. fuck. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Yeah, you, you know, guys, I'll, I'll, I love. Sorry, go on, Stephen. Oh, I was just gonna just echo what Derek said. Uh, you know, just um, we can build something better. Anybody that looks and and thinks this is the best humanity can do, you're you're you've lost your mind already to to the system. You know, and one of the best ways to get it back is just make sure that that you take time when you're with your loved ones and you're doing the things that you enjoy doing you know, learn how to keep all the fear thoughts out of your head while you're, you're engaged in those activities. And that alone will tremendously uh, improve your life and, and, and improve the, the global experience for all humanity. The more we do that. Mm -hmm. yeah, awesome. So awesome. Well, listen, Stephen, I think we should have another chat um, closer to the guy Fox. Uh, I agree. Yay. And then Derek, you and I are going to have a chat about fasting, which yeah. oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I'm ready to go into light body mode. Hell yeah. <laughs> yes. Derek, you couldn't have come by um, a better time. I really, I, I, I've i been talking about it more than I've been actually applying my knowledge to that. Um, sure. So now I have a reason. And we have a few other people that are going to join us on that mission. Hell yeah. Um, but yeah, I want to bring you guys back together. We have a couple of, uh, Stephen, you don't know, I don't know if you know Greg. And then there's that other guy, Derek, who, who was the other guy on the on your chat? Man, uh, you Fred guys are brilliant. Yeah. From the Librecast, Fred? Yes. Fred yeah, yeah, yeah. and the Fred other guy. Fred A. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Freedom. <laughs> I love talking about freedom. Um, oh, getting yeah. all these ideas out there and uh, really creating, co-creating our reality, our future. You guys, gentlemen, thank you so much for your work and for your participation to, in today's chat. And yeah, I'll be back in touch with both of you guys. And for the people in the audience, I highly suggest that you connect with both of these brilliant minds. 
And yeah, that's it for today, you guys. Thank you so much. I'll Thanks. see you guys next time. Merci beaucoup. Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> Bye for now. <laughs>